Hello, and welcome to This Week at Osa Libre. I'm Michael Barreto, and you're not. This week, we have a lot of nice features for you. Uh, we're going to start off with Janine. Last week, she was out in the Movedra, and this week, she's going to be out in the Primitivo and tell us about the history of that heritage variety. So, take it away, Janine. Hi guys, Janine here. I am on the northwest side of the vineyard in the Primitivo block. Primitivo is one of the varieties that we grow here on the property along with Cabernet Sauvignon and Morvedra. It is in our Nativo, which is 100% estate Primitivo, our Rojo del Patron estate blend, that is Cabernet Sauvignon and Primitivo, and then our Porvita blend, which is all-encompassing Cabernet Sauvignon, Morvedra, and Primitivo. It was brought across the Adriatic Sea in the 1700s. The Croatian name Sir Lenak Kastelanski was then changed to Primitivo when it arrived in Italy. Primitivo means early ripening in Latin. It was renamed by an Italian monk because he noticed that it was the first grapes to ripen in his vineyard. About a century later, it was brought to the United States by early settlers and nestled in California in the 1800s. Analysis from a study done at UC Davis in the 1990s shows that the California Zinfandel and Primitivo from Italy are um, genetically identical. Early settlers in California brought the Primitivo grape from their native Italy and planted it widely throughout this state. It was easy to grow, easy to propagate, and at one time was the largest variety planted in the state of California. Wines made with the Primitivo varietal tend to be big, jammy, high alcohol with um, chewy tannins. They make a great pairing for rich, meaty dishes. So now we've got a glass of the 2016 Nativo. This is our 100% estate Primitivo. It's our most current release. Um, lots of pepper, strawberry, bright fruit, um, definitely some spice there. Uh, it makes a great pairing for traditional Italian dishes. Michael is going to be um, making a dish of steak pinwheels that he will pair with this in the cooking segment a little bit later on. Cheers. Thanks, Janine, for that excellent report. We learned a lot about the heritage grape of California. And now it's out to the pasture with Chris, and he's going to be telling us all about Angus cattle, why we have them, what's so special about them, and what makes them so tasty. Here's Chris. Hello again, you guys. I'm Chris Bear, and today we're going to talk about Angus. We grow Angus here. Um, for our beef program, and it's a big part of Osa Libre. Originally, the name Angus had the word Aberdeen in front of it, and it was cattle that were originally started in Scotland in the 16th century. In May of 1873, George Grant brought four Angus bulls over to America from Scotland, and that was the beginning of the Angus herds that populated the United States. After those four bulls were here, they were bred with longhorns and shorthorns. And soon they realized the marbling qualities. And then in 1883, they formed the American Angus Association. And now, the, as you can hear, they're pretty excited about themselves. The black Angus are the most predominantly used beef product in the United States. To be certified, an Angus animal has to be 51% Angus and meet 10 specific criteria. They have to have a modest to high degree of marbling. They have to have medium to fine marbling texture. They have to have a 10 to 16 square inch ribeye. And they have to have less than 1,050 pounds of hang weight. If they're any larger than that, they'll be too much fat. And that means they have less than one inch of fat carcass on the outside. And they have to be free of capillary rupture and most importantly, they have to have no dark characteristics. And what dark means is stress. Uh, many beef uh, animals get very stressed in feedlots. Fortunately, over here at Osa Libre, we don't use a feedlot. So these animals are not stressed anyway, as you can tell. They don't look too stressed to me. So, but when an animal is stressed, it'll create a dark meat, which is very uh, unbecoming to consumers. 
Our animals are pasture raised on over 60 available acres and we use rotational grazing here. That means we put them in this five acres for about two weeks. You can tell by the grass they've got another week to go and that gives the other areas chance 31 days to recover. Each time we'll move them to a different five acres so that they don't overeat and they don't uh, undereat. otherwise it'll go to fallow. If you look at our property all over the back you'll see that the green and the maintenance is done by the cattle. They're, they're better than park um, gardeners and yet they give us a product in return. Once a year we work the cattle. We bring them in and that's when the bull calves become steers. That's uh, part of the process and then we brand, we ear tag, we give them um, a fly and worm uh, maintenance, we check their hooves, their eyes, and their hinds to make sure they're safe. We give them a pregnancy check and um, then we let them out. So vines and wines is our first business here. But Angus is a passion too and it's also a very important part of our SIP sustainability and practice lifestyle that we embrace. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight. I'm trying to think if I left anything out. Um, we do use no hormones here of course. They live naturally on pastures, rich pastures in our soil of legumes and grasses. And I think that's about it. So until next time, you guys, stay safe, keep your distance, and hope to see so many of you in the near future in our tasting room enjoying one of our estate Angus burgers cooked by Chef Jeff Scott. Until then. We're all just a little bit hungry now, Chris. So thanks a lot. Next, it's time for the news from Adelaida and beyond. Here's Ashley. And now news from Adelaida and beyond. Shearing of the alpacas. As it is getting warmer here in our little corner of the world, and that is what it's really starting to feel like, shearing time has come for our herd of alpacas. Last Friday, a specialist came to the ranch and cut the winter coats from our furry friends. The fleece was gathered up and taken by local artisans in the area who will condition the fibers and make wonderful creations like socks, hats, trivets, hats, sweaters, shawls, mufflers, scarves, and a whole lot of other things. How are the children doing? Many are worried about the effects of children's learning during this quarantine. I know that is tough on the parents, but I think that my best friend is doing a great job. I talked to her daughter this week who is six and her mom is teaching her so much. For example, she is learning new colors like blue Hawaiian, greyhound, lemon drop, ruby red teeny, and my personal favorite, the purple hooter. She is even learning new kitchen measurements. Did you know that 1.5 ounces is equal to one jigger, which is also three count if done as a free pour? The eagles have landed. This just in, we have had our first sighting of the bald eagles on the property just last night and this morning. Chris saw the two of them in their nest last evening and while Janine was out doing her feature this week, one of the eagles flew over our production crew. It is great to have them back. And now for the weather. This week in Paso Robles, we will see highs in the lower 90s, but mainly high 80s with lows in the 40s. Hey, can't we just keep this forecast on loop until September? I mean, it's always the same around here. Well, we can talk about that later. Just keep going. Oh, don't forget our favorite Zinfandel vine. Another week has gone by, and here it is compared to last week. They grow up so quickly. Soon it'll be time to harvest, then prune, and then we'll have to start all over again. Oh, speaking of Zinfandel, I need a drink. Mmm. Yep, one of my favorites. And now it is time for Ashley's opinion. This week we'll be talking about movies that you should be watching with all of that free time on your hands. Here's a list of the top five movies that everyone should see according to some top compiler of lists. All right, bread, Cheerios, milk, coffee cream. Wait, 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 that, that's my grocery list, here. Oh here's, my God, here's the Michael. <sighs> okay, aliens, oh, love it. Sigourney Weaver is one badass alien killer. Outbreak, really, guys, I mean, come on. 
Casablanca. Oh, I love that movie. It's starting to look like a beginning of a beautiful friendship. Monty Python, Search for the Holy Grail. Oh my God, worst movie ever. Knights of Knee. Oh, shoot me now. The Godfather. Oh, total classic. Come on. Everyone should love that movie. Al Pacino rocks. Well, that's it for my rant this week. Back to Michael. Now that we're all caught up with the news from Adelaide and beyond, it's off to our cooking demo into the Osa Libre kitchen. It's me. Uh, we're going to be doing an Italian styled beef pinwheel. Uh, it tastes great. So enjoy this. Hello and welcome back to the kitchen at Osa Libre. I'm Michael Barreto. And this afternoon we have a lovely recipe all ready for you to go today. It is going to be a steak pinwheels featuring a top round roast. Let's get right into it, okay? So first of all, we're going to make the stuffing for the steak. Um, real simple, just need some Italian breadcrumbs, about three quarters of a cup. And then about a cup of grated Parmesan cheese in there. A little bit more, too bad. Uh, two cloves of garlic. And then just a little bit of salt and pepper to season. And we'll add some of that to the steak as well. Salt. Pepper. And just going to stir this up. And this is going to give us some texture to our uh, meat when we get it cooked. We're going to end up rolling it like a jelly roll and then um, baking it in a pan. So now we got that ready to go. We're going to move over to the meat portion. And this is one of the top round roasts that we have. Um, you're going to use any uh, roast type of meat that you like. Flank steak works as well. Um, what I've done is I've butterflied this open. So I basically cut it in half all the way to the point where it just hinges open. <clears throat> and now I'm going to pound it out so I get it a little bit thinner. And I'm going to be using a meat, meat tenderizer for this. And this is just a bunch of uh, little knife blades that um, are going to tenderize it because we're going to be cooking a little bit quicker. And I mentioned on a couple of episodes back that the round can get a little tough if you cook it too quickly. Um, I'm going to now uh, just kind of pound it out, tenderize it, flatten it so that it will roll a little bit better. It's going to roll like that, okay? So here we go. And then once you get one side done, you need to flip it over and tenderize the other side. After that, it's time to season. We're going to season with a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of pepper, flip it over back to the side that we're going to uh, stuff, back with a little bit of pepper and a little bit of sea salt. Now we're going to take our seasoning and stuffing that we made earlier. And we're just going to sprinkle that over the top. Get that evenly put there. And then making a return appearance from last week's program is the other half of the spinach that we use in the paella. So we're going to take that. This is now defrosted and just kind of sprinkle that all over the top. So some people say this is either like a burrito or a jelly roll. What we're going to do is we're going to take one end and just roll it up. And there we have our roll. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to tie it up and then we're going to cook it in the pan. And now it's time to put these in the pan. You'll notice I have two of them now. Um, before we started today, I had um, 
of the roast, I cut it down into two so that we could have more manageable pieces of meat. Plus I got a couple people here that I want to feed from a social distance, okay? Start off with the larger one. See if that works. And there we go. And all we want to do is get it in there to brown it on all sides. Okay, we now have these browned on all sides. Nice brown there. Getting ready to go in the oven. What we're going to do, help season them up a little bit. We have some uh, Oso Libre Nativo. And we're going to add just a little bit of that to the pan. Maybe about a quarter cup. And then once it starts to simmer, then we're going to add some homemade tomato sauce. So uh, this is going to give it a nice Italian flair. And it's going to help with the cooking of it in the pan. Okay? You can pour just a little bit over the top, a little around the bottom. And then what we're going to do when we put this... Um, in, we're going to cover it and then we're going to let it bake for about 20 minutes and then we're going to rotate the meat another 20 minutes and then we're going to take the lid off and let it finish up. Okay? Have the oven set to uh, 350 degrees. I'm going to uh, put it in. ready to rotate it the last time and then put it back in with the lid off. Go nice reduced sauce and um, meat ready to go. Close that up and take that here. Move that over. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it. Now we're going to put a little bit of sauce on top. And now just a little bit of Parmesan for presentation. Clean the plate off a little bit. And there you go. A nice uh, top round pinwheel steak. A nice little selection for the family for dinner. And we're going to pair that with Oso Libre. 2016 Nativo. And take it from me, it was very tasty. We had a nice separated lunch afterwards. Uh, very good. And the wine pairing was excellent. Uh, that about wraps us up this week for Oso Libre this week. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us. A couple shout outs to the people that uh, mentioned us in the text box. Uh, we got Joey, Cindy, Marcy, Craig, Lori, Dawn, Marlene, Rosalind, Eileen, Dennis, Joe, and Lottie. So thanks everybody for joining in. Don't forget that the tasting room, we're not open for tasting, but we are open for sales. So if you're local and want to come by and pick up some wine during the week, we can do that. If you're a little far away and want to have it shipped, we're more than happy to do that for you. Also with the uh, coming uh, shortage of meat, we do have a few uh, top round roasts and some carne asada and a few cuts of beef available. So if you'd like to have that shipped, we can do that for you as well. Uh, right now, hang back, enjoy the outtakes from this week, and we will see you next week on This Week at Oso Libre. I'm Michael Barreto. Hi guys, Janine here. I am on the northwest side of the vineyard in our Primitivo block here. <laughs> Who wants it? Come on. Who wants it? Well, it's just not happening today. Who, oh, who wants it? There you go. Come on. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget our favorites in Thundell Vine. Another week has gone by, and here it is compared to last week. They grow up so quickly. Soon it'll be time to harvest and prune, and it'll all start over again. And speaking of Zinfandel, from our featured wine this week, mmm. I think it's it's telling me that I need to take a drink. Mm. Ashley, that's not in the script.
I added it. You can ad lib when I tell you to ad lib. Well, that's just no fun, Michael. We're gonna have to have a talk. Oh God. Oh, you could get the the bald eagle. Oh wow. Oh, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. And the only boy that has a good time here is a bull. He comes in for 90 days once a year. He arrives with a smile. He doesn't have to uh, flip through Tinder to find 15 girlfriends. He just gets his 15 girlfriends here waiting for him. And after three months, he, he comes in with a smile and he leaves with a smile. For example, she is learning new colors like Blue Hawaiian, Greyhound, Lemon Drop, br br Ruby Red Teeny. Okay, now we have a helicopter. Shearing time has come to our herd of alpacas. Last Friday, a specialist came ranch and cut the winter coats from wait, our wait, furry friend. Uh, let me see that. It's missing a word. Let, let, me, let me change the copy. Oh. Just sit here. Oh. Don't do anything. Mm. Okay, I think I got it fixed. What did you do? I said don't do anything. I didn't do a thing. Are you... The... That was gone before you left. 